Good afternoon. We are going to be covering a three-part video series in which we are essentially asking the question, how does our process feed or our fluid coming into our system and leaving our system change over time? And so if we have equipment or a series of equipment with our feed coming in and coming out, uh, if it's in steady state, that's fine. But what if there's any deviation from steady state or what if we want to change our process in any way if with an increase or a decrease? How do we model that? How do we analyze that and assess for that? And so we're going to cover that in these three parts here. And, and then um, with analyzing and assessing it, what if there's continual deviations and there's, there's an influx uh, coming in and we want it to stay at a, at a particular set point? How do we then assess how much to reduce so then it stays and doesn't overpass that set point by too much? Or if there's, we're not getting enough, how do we increase? And if so, by how much and at what rate over time? So those are the questions we're going to be handling in this video series. And in this first one, in part A, we're going to derive the differential equation describing the dynamic liquid level response of a conical tank. So we're going to use a conical tank as our example here uh, to assess just fluid coming into a piece of equipment and what that looks like. So our parameters are going to be that the, the height <clears throat> of the conical tank is going to be 8 meters. The radius at the top is going to be 5 meters. The radius at the bottom, 1 meter. Um, <clears throat> the area at where it's going to drain at the bottom of the conical tank is going to be 0 0.01 meters squared. And then the flow rate, the initial flow rate coming in at steady state is going to be 0 0.1 meters cubed for our flow rate. And so we're going to, at the end of this video, be able to simulate the liquid height in the tank after 5, 000, uh, for 5,000 seconds after the inlet flow has been increased by 20%. So we'll have it at steady state. We'll increase it by 20% and assess and model what happens to our system after 5,000 seconds. So let's go ahead and begin by deriving the equation itself. And so we described that we have a conical tank. So we're going to have that. So we've got a radius at the top there. And then down at the bottom, we're going to have our radius at the bottom. And of course, our conical tank has a set height of 8 meters. And so now coming in to our tank, of course, <laughs> is our flow rate. And this initial flow rate. Well, we can, we'll just say steady state coming in, um, but it'll be it, any flow rate in particular. And here we have our flow rate leaving the conical tank. So the initial question is, well, how do we, how do we assess any changes over time? And, and how would we, how do we go about looking at what the changes are? And so if we have an increase in our flow rate, um, but our, our flow rate coming out is, is not being able to match that. If it's basically coming in faster than it's coming out, then, of course, the liquid level is going to rise in our tank. And then vice versa, if the flow rate leaving the tank is faster than the flow rate coming in, then, of course, the liquid level is going to drain. So what we're dealing with when we want to set up our differential equation here to derive is our fluid level within the tank. And so let's go ahead and <clears throat> ask that question, which is, how does the volume of our tank change with respect to time? Well, as we just unpacked, it's going to be whatever's coming in to our tank minus whatever is leaving our tank. So we have how volume changes with respect to time is dependent upon how much is coming in versus how much is coming out. So the question now becomes, how do we assess how much is coming in versus how much is coming out? And so if we take Bernoulli's equation and we <clears throat> ask the question, well, at the top here, with mass and energy balance, we have uh, a, the potential energy is at its greatest at the top of the tank with the fluid level. And then as it drops down the tank, the potential energy come, becomes zero down at the bottom of the tank, and that's when the kinetic energy 
is at its maximum. And so we want to be able to look at um, basically <clears throat> how, much, how does the potential energy become completely converted into kinetic energy when it gets to the bottom of the tank. And so we're looking at kinetic energy per unit mass, in which case here, so we've got kinetic energy per unit mass. Oh, that looks funny. Looks like kinetic unit per mass. Uh, <laughs> let's do this, per unit mass, kinetic energy per, my apologies. Okay, so kinetic energy per unit mass is going to be V squared over two and as we talked about, it's going to be at the, at the bottom here, what's gonna be on the right side here is uh, what it was at the top. And so we have, um, or just basically any, any height here. So if the liquid is at the top and it's dropping down to the bottom, well the potential energy was basically gravity times how high the, the liquid was in the tank. So it's gonna be gravity times the height that the fluid level was at. And so then just solving this for V, for our kinetic energy, is going to give us the square root of 2GH. And this is going to be in units of meters per second for our velocity leaving the tank. <clears throat> and we're going to assume that the, we're making an assumption here that the kinetic energy at the top of the tank is negligible because the, the surface area is so great compared to the bottom. Um, with our, our hole being a lot smaller that it's leaving uh, the surface area is a lot greater at the top and the potential energy is so much less of course at the top because it hasn't had that distance to fall that it's negligible in this case in which we can then uh, rule that part out of our equation here now another thing we want to uh, assess for is our volume overall and how are we going to assess how much volume the area of volume or the total amount of volume and how it's changed over time well volume is so volume changes with respect to its height right so as the height decreases on our tank the volume is of course going to be less and then height is going to be changing the height of the fluid is going to be changing with respect to time so we're wanting to ask the question, how is our volume changing with respect to height while that height changes with respect to time? So assessing for the total volume is going to be equal to uh, the cross-sectional area multiplied by how much the height is changing because <clears throat> uh, volume is going to be the area times the height of something so in this case our conical tank the volume is going to be changing as the as we assess the cross-sectional area however that much get, keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller with respect to the height of where we are on the conical tank which we can model here by saying if uh, our dependent variable is our cross-sectional area, and we have our height. Well, as the height increases on our conical tank, we, we see, because it's inverted, the cross-sectional area continues to expand. And so our volume is going to be changing with respect to height. And if we take the integral of this, oops, and switch it over to draw. If we take the integral uh, from all the way from zero to height, <clears throat> um, the top of our conical tank, we're going to get the total amount of volume and how that has changed with respect to its height. Now we've seen how uh, in our equation one up here, we've got how volume changes over time with respect to what's coming in versus what's coming out. And we've seen now, but volume is its cross-sectional area times its height. And so we can go ahead and put this over here and say <clears throat> our cross-sectional area 
with height over with respect to how height is respecting <laughs> how height is changing with respect to time equals our flow rate coming in minus our flow rate coming out and our flow rate coming out is going to be over here which is um, our cross-sectional area at the bottom multiplied by um, how, how quickly the fluid is leaving here because our cross-sectional area is going to be in units of meters squared and how quickly it's leaving which is our velocity of it coming out is going to be in units of meters per second which is going to give us then of course our uh, volumetric flow rate in units of meters cubed uh, that's supposed to be seconds meters cubed per second which means we're assessing here as cross-sectional area um, as the height chain um, cross-sectional area multiplied by the height changing with respect to time is equal to whatever is coming in minus what is coming out and so here we're substituting what we just solved over here cross-sectional area at the bottom of the conical tank with the volume or with the, the velocity at which that fluid is moving at the bottom and we solved that earlier by figuring out what was the kinetic energy per unit mass at the bottom of the tank in which case is um, the square root of 2 times g h so now with this equation if we get how height changes with respect to time by itself we're able to see that the rate at which height changes with respect to time is equal to everything here on the right hand side divided by our cross-sectional area which the the last thing we need to then resolve before we actually code this so we can model it and assess how much the flow rate um, has changed well um, model what happens as the flow rate has increased by 20 percent is um, what is is asking the question what was the initial height of our fluid when things were at steady state so we need to go ahead and assess for a steady state here so at steady state we're able to make the note that our flow rate coming in equals our flow rate coming out and so we're able to say that q in equals our flow rate coming out which we have derived earlier in this and now we're trying to assess what was the height of the fluid level at steady state so we're trying to figure out what is our height our initial height here so we're going to solve and get h by itself to, to figure this out well in this so then here all we're doing is getting h by itself <clears throat> so we have q in squared um i guess i could divide divide by well let me start this over here q in divided by a h that's the cross-sectional area at the bottom of our conical tank squared equals c2 g h so then of course our initial height of the fluid at steady state is going to be equal to q n by a cross-sectional area at the bottom of the tank squared uh, divided by well, well, we'll do this. We'll, we'll times it by one over two, one half, <laughs> one half g. Oh my goodness, one half g. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this in to Python so that we can assess how uh, how the flow rate has changed and what happens over 5,000 seconds. Now, as you can see, we have a change of scenery today because yesterday when I was first shooting it was on Labor Day and the library was closed. But now we have a nice little workspace, same shirt, very important. 
And let's go ahead and code this out now and simulate the increased flow of 20% over 5,000 seconds. So to begin, because we're going to be using an array of values, we want to import uh, NumPy as our tool, one of the tools we're going to be using. We're also going to be plotting out <clears throat> the change over time with the fluid level. So we need to bring in the tool for that. Our make subplots tool. And then another thing is in order to solve the differential equation that we just wrote out, we need to bring in another tool. So a scipy integrate. Um, import. Oh yes, of course, our solve IVP tool. Let's solve BPV. There we go. So the next thing uh, to get started is to actually put in our parameters. So let's go ahead and do that now. Looking back at here, uh, our parameters. So we have the total height of our tank. So let's go ahead and put that in. Our each total, each total and that is equal to it said eight meters then we had radius at the top radius at the bottom five meters and one meter respectively then we have uh, our cross-sectional area at where the fluid is going to be leaving the conical tank as well as our flow in at the steady state so that is 0 0.01 meter squared there okay so this is our the size of our hole at the bottom of the tank the cross-sectional area and then the initial steady state Coming in, this was 0 0.1 meters cubed per second. And then we have gravity, of course, at play as a parameter. Our initial height of the fluid and how much time everything's going to take. So let's go ahead and put in our gravity and the time it'll take. Well, let's go ahead and actually per second squared. Do our H naught, the initial fluid level of the tank, which we derived here. There we go. So our H naught is our Q naught uh, divided by AH squared. Q naught divided by AH. And this whole thing squared. And then this, uh, multiplied by a one half of G. There we go. And then we have lastly, uh, the time that it's gonna take, which we said is 5,000 seconds is what we're trying to simulate here. So now that we have our parameters set into our code, we need to then make a function that tracks in, uh, the, the change of our cross-sectional area of our conical tank as, uh, as it changes over its height. And so let's go ahead and start by defining a function for the conical tank, and specifically the cross-sectional area of our conical tank. So we have one of our values, our parameters is gonna be uh, the height of the conical tank, then we're going to have our radius at the bottom. We're going to have our radius at the top. And then we're going to have our total height of which it begins with. And so we've got our total height, our top radius, our bottom radius, and then, of course, with the H, everything in between and how the cross sectional area is changing at each point. So then comes the question of defining how we go about figuring out how the cross sectional area is changing. So let's let's go ahead and scope this out here. We have our radius and our height as height is changing. 
is our radius changes with respect to height, radius being the dependent variable here in this function. And so if the radius at the bottom is here and at, at one, and we have up here at five meters, then we have our radius at the top. Well, we can then draw the line between these points and that slope is the rate at which it is changing. And so everything here um, with our rise over run and everything between is our rate of change for our cross-sectional area in which we can track. And so going about that, if we start, so we've got our our radius at the top minus radius at the bottom, because these are the two points we're using here, divided by h at the top minus h at the bottom. And we're just going to go ahead and assume that the h at the bottom is zero here because just with respect to what we're evaluating is the tank and the fluid level in the tank itself already. So let's go ahead and plug this in now with our R value and how the radius is going to be changing with respect to height. So our R was R top minus R bottom and we had that divided by, oh, that was connected, divided by H total and uh, minusing zero, but we're leaving that out. But the additional thing is um, we need to consider that um, we need to add in the R bottom here from our graph here, right, right here. So we gotta add that back in at, at every point. And then we're going to return, we're gonna return the area of a circle, which is NP, pi times, so pi r squared is what we're doing here. So as radius is changing with respect to the height changing, uh, we're funneling it back through the rate of change. What is the radius at each particular point at each particular height? And then we're going to return the area at each of those points. Next, now that we have defined how our cross-sectional area of the conical tank is going to be changing over height, uh, we're going to go ahead and then plug in and define the right-hand side of our equation, which in particular we're, we're dealing with this right here. So this is the differential equation that we derived for how the fluid height is going to be changing over time. So now we're going to go ahead and define that. So let's and to find that so the independent variable is going to be time and our dependent variable of that function is going to be how the height is changing so we have our ac our cross-sectional area is equal to what we just defined in the function above so we're going to just copy basically probably could have just copied and pasted here but everything that we just defined the function above then the next thing is we need to show our Q in, the new Q in. What we're trying to model here is a 20% increase over 5,000 seconds. And so we're going to do a 20% increase multiplied by the initial Q flow rate coming in, shown right here. It's a 20% increase with that. And then what we're going to return, we need to return an array of values because solve IVP solves simultaneous differential equations at once and so we need to model our solution here in an array of values and now we're going to go ahead and put in our function which is everything right right uh, right here so let's go ahead and do that now so we've got qn minus h times square root of 2gh qn what do we say minus H times two times G times H and this whole thing squared and I'm a little worried about order of operations here so I'm just gonna put that in its own little 
thing, that times that, that, and then all of that divided by the cross-sectional area at each point. There we go. Divided by a cross-sectional area at each point. Now, lastly, we're, gonna, we're going to go ahead and plot this out and see what that shows us. But before we can plot, of course, we have to actually do our solve IVP. And so let's go ahead and put that in now. So this is going to be defining our <clears throat> um, differential equation. It's going to be solving simultaneous equations. Differential equations, we're going to now solve the one that we defined just above here. So we're going to go ahead and define the right hand equation, or right hand side of the equation. That's our differential equation. Uh, we have it over a particular time span. We're going to do from zero seconds to uh, when we want our time to end. Now it's asking us for our independent variable, which in this case is how is the fluid height changing? So that's our H naught value. And then lastly, we're going to put in something called, um, we're going to do dense output because what this is going to do is basically create a function in which it will give us pump out a solution object. And so if we put in a time, if we want to know what is the height at any particular time, we can put that in with using this. So if we say equals true, there we go. Let's go ahead and solve that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and name it result. So now, for example, if we do, um, well, I don't know, let's say at 500 seconds, it doesn't like that, res was not defined, I got to rerun this, let's try this again, okay, so that seems pretty small, that also has not changed, that's interesting, okay, uh, uh, look at that, I put squared when that should be to the square root, not squared. Let's rerun that, rerun that, rerun that. That's also high. Okay. We still have issues at hand here. Maybe I did a bad order of operation here. What if we maybe I coded this poorly? Time all. Okay, I think that looks better. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and plot these values out with after fixing our code here. And so plotting this out now, we're going to need our independent variable and our dependent variable, and we're going to give those their variable names. So we'll call our independent variable uh, our time plot. And so let's go ahead and space that out evenly. Um, from the beginning all the way to the end at 100 second increments. And then our dependent variable is we're going to call it H, <clears throat> the height of the fluid level in the tank. And that is equal to, um, well, that is equal to our everything that we've captured in across the time plot. So basically, what we're saying here is that we've, we've captured our array values um, through our solve IVP and it, it has that array values from uh, every particular point for our height at the conical tank over and across time. And so now we're saying, kick us out what our, what our height is at every particular second along the way that we've captured in our array. So that's what we're, what's, that's what we're capturing there in that code. And then now let's go ahead and plot this up. So we're going to do our make subplots, oops, add, we're going to get all of our x values and our y values. So x equals the time and y equals the height that we just defined above. And then we're going to update the layout to be, to be able to actually capture our graph and our values. So we're going to say a width of 600, a height of 
400 and then we're gonna say a template plotly dark goodness gracious and voila so if we what we what we see across going on here is it, it started off at around five well and then um, over time it continued to increase 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 and we see that it keeps increasing it really doesn't caper off until start until we start even even here it looks like maybe even a slight rise but after 5,000 seconds we're starting to get a good feel of it being around 7.3 it stays at 7.3 for for quite a while now so this would be the new steady state fluid level in our tank if we've increased the flow by 20 percent um, because if we were to capture anything less let's say over 50 seconds and let's rerun everything uh, see it's just continuing to rise so we have no guarantee it's it hasn't flattened out yet and so even if we say 500 seconds Again, it's it, there's no flattening of the curve. So, um, but if we end it at 5,000 seconds here, we start to see <clears throat> where we're getting that consistency where we can start to say, okay, the new steady state fluid level when we've raised the fluid and in coming into the tank by 20% is 7.33 meters in the tank. Thank you.